I just picked up a crazy high-tech piece of equipment for the homestead, a thermal imaging camera. This is the best-selling one on Amazon, and it's like 300 and some bucks Canadian, so it's actually affordable. I'm going to go through how good it works. We're going to test my water thermal mass, concrete thermal mass, other thermal mass in the greenhouses, all of my buildings, the high-efficient ones, even some crummy buildings. You can see the thermal bridging for the studs and everything. On the homestead, I also use this to test freeze-dried food if it needs more drying time. I'm also going to be using this as a high-tech way to candle my incubating chicken eggs. I can also see, shine this on the wife and see if I'm not helping around the house enough. She puts off quite the heat signature. So let me take you through what I tested with this thing and how good this little product is. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine was thinking about buying a property. I went there and the home inspector uh, was there. We went the same time and he had one of these things and he checked the efficiency of the house. He shined one of these into the attic and he saw where some insulation blew away, the soffits blew insulation. And he walked me through this. I'm like, holy cow, like how much are those? Super cheap, he said. So I actually reached out to the company and they sent, sent me one to give it a go. And this is what this video is about. I am thoroughly impressed. These things are made for iPhone or Android. I use an iPhone, so I got that one. All you do is plug it into your phone. It takes you to download the app. You open up the app and you got a high-tech thermal imager. So let's get right to what I tested on the homestead so far. So me, I'm in my passive solar greenhouse here. Um, of course, so we grow bananas in minus 50 Celsius Canada with a minimal heating bill. But some of the concepts I used is super insulation. So I'm checking all of my walls. I did an invention called a double double door. So I have two garden doors in the same hole with an air gap. That thing is super efficient compared to your standard door. And then I checked my concrete in a cold, the cold morning when I woke up. I brought the thermal imager in here and the concrete's radiating heat back compared to everything else in the greenhouse. So it's heating up by day and it's radiating back at night. And my water storage tanks are not hit by direct sunlight. It's just the ambient heat by day heating them up. And a cold morning, I brought the thermal imager in here. You can see the temperature and they're radiating heat back at night. I tested my fish tank as well. That's just like a water tank. And that's radiating heat back at night, too. I treated myself to a used hot tub and refurbished it myself. So what I did is I, I bought one that's simple and the pumps and things are on the outside. And what I did is I spray foamed the entire inside after re-siliconing and seal, sealing everything. And then I stuffed the entire casement full of insulation on top of the spray foam. So I'm surprised this is what a high efficient hot tub looks like on the thermal imager. You can still see obviously the heat coming off of it, but the amount of insulation I put in there, the water in there is 100 degrees Fahrenheit and in a cold morning that's like 12 degrees in the greenhouse, you can see how high efficient it is with a thermal imager. On a cold morning, I fired up the furnace to run. The thermal imager clearly shows any of the heat loss out of the exhaust and it shows the heat blasting out of the furnace as well. Wood stoves are great. When they're not in use though, it this is a pipe that goes to the outside. You can clearly see both in my house and the greenhouse with the thermal imager that this is a cold point. So this is steel that goes outside and when the wood stove is not in use, it actually it has, is a very cold spot. By far the weakest points in all of my buildings are overhead doors. This is just an overhead door that literally goes to, in the wintertime, minus 30 or minus 50 Celsius outside. This is a definite weak point, and it really shows up. This, I did not do my double-double door system yet, and you can clearly see on the thermal imager, this is definite heat loss. This is one of my double-double doors with glass in it, and it clearly shows how efficient it is compared to just if you had one set of garden doors in. The double-double system works excellent. My greenhouse walls, it's a post and beam construction with a nine inch space for insulation. I put nine inches of overlapping rigid insulation in between the posts. So I have much less stick framing for thermal bridging. 
and on the thermal imager, you can tell a little bit if I was to shine it at the, kind of the ceiling where the trusses are, some heat kind of sneaks out up there. But in my walls, there is no thermal bridging the way that I did it. This is a much better construction than a stick frame standard house. Now I put the thermal imager on in the middle of the afternoon and you can clearly see the water is quite a bit colder than the ambient temperature, which means the water is being warmed by the sun by day. And then when I check first thing in the morning or in the middle of the night, this is giving off heat. So it's sucking heat right now, thermal imager shows, and it's giving heat back at night. Same with the concrete in the middle of the afternoon. The concrete is the coldest spot. It is nice and warm in the greenhouse, so the concrete is picking up all of that em energy by day, and the thermal imager by tomorrow morning, first thing, will switch, and the concrete is releasing the heat. So cool. And I have not even utilized my concrete in-floor heat, and just the concrete and the ambient temperature by day, the greenhouse gets nice and warm, the concrete gives off a significant amount of heat. Now, obviously, all of your heat loss is on the glazing side of a greenhouse. So this is tw uh, twin mall, eight mil polycarbonate outside with a six inch air gap and six mil greenhouse UV resistant poly on the inside. And obviously, that's the coldest spot that shows up on the thermal imager in our cold nights and definitely picked it up. My shop is very, very efficient, except for the south side of it has two massive overhead doors almost taking up the whole wall. I knew that was a weak point, but just how bad, it's pretty bad. <laughs> the thermal imager on the outside, when I'm outside looking at my shop, I can clearly see the heat escaping. And on the inside of my shop, like it's cold outside still where I live, you can clearly see how inefficient it is. So my plan is to do an accordion style or some sort of additional door on the outside with an air gap to uh, fix this issue. This is where all of my heat loss goes. My shop doesn't have an eave overhang going out. So with blow-in insulation, I was only able to put like six inches of blow-in insulation there. The rest of the attic has 32 inches or R80 blow-in. But always on your building, the eave goes this way, the trusses go this way. Out here is the coldest spot in this top corner, and that clearly shows up. For doing all this YouTube stuff for you guys, I got myself a pretty high-tech computer. This thing, though, pulls 1,500 watts, and it's insane the amount of heat that it gives off on that thermal imager. What's really kind of neat is when you're thermal imaging around, you can pick up all of your phantom or small power loads. So right here, I have one of our little Amazon... Um, security cameras, up here is a router, and then fans running. But anywhere that might be drawing a little bit of power, you can pick up with a thermal imager. So if you're in an off-grid cabin and wondering, where's your power going? You can pick up all the little phantom loads. Here's one of my double-double windows. So it's two double-pane windows with an air gap sealed up and closed up. On the thermal imager now, I can see how efficient it is, and it's much more efficient than the extremely expensive windows that I put in my house that have an R value of 8. Triple pane windows, this is two cheap windows in the same hole with that air gap I invented, and it, now that I have that imager, it shows me. So just how efficient is a so-called efficient water heater? Well, the thermal imager uh, certainly shows us that. So if I was to build my own water heater, I'd put much, much, much more insulation on there uh, to protect any heat loss from the hot water that you're heating up with a lot of money. Here's one of my Harvest Rate freeze dryers. So how it works is it cools the entire compartment in there down to like really negative temperatures. Then it turns on a vacuum pump and makes a negative pressure environment and all the heat trays warm the food up. So the moisture from the food turns into a gas, the solid to a gas, and back to a solid around the chamber. Now, it kind of senses that how long it needs for drying, but when you take the food out, you kind of, I just felt if anything was cold, that means that there's still some moisture in it and it's not fully dry. With the thermal imager now, all you do is plug it in your phone, open the app, two seconds, look at it. If there's any cold spots, stick it back in the freeze dryer because it needs more drying time. So you're not going to spoil all your food by packaging up food that's not completely dried before you put it away. Here's my first egg incubator. 
that I use for incubating chicken eggs. And it works very well. But what I do is take a flashlight and I will candle the eggs to see if they're fertilized. Now with that thermal imager, you can just literally go from above, uh, figure out the heat signature. If one looks like it's cold and it's not doing anything, it's like an almost x-ray vision. And when you end up doing quite a few eggs like I plan to do, this is my uh, large incubator that I got. And I'm going to hook it up when my barn is finished. But I forget how many eggs it does, hundreds or something. I can just literally with that thermal imager test all the eggs now and I don't have to candle every single one. No more hunting for chicken eggs. <laughs> Yummy. I'm going to eat this right now. My pigs are going to have babies right away. And uh, let's see if they had their babies yet with the thermal imager. Nope, not yet. So I don't know if you can see my cattle 200 yards away looks about that. They're just laying down basking in the sun and what it looks like on the thermal imager. So 200 yards away, this little thing picks up. My house that I built for myself is uh, small, but it's very, very efficient. So uh, what this is, is two by six construction with an inch and a half rigid on the outside for a total R value of just a hair below 30. And in the attic, I have a four foot overhang on the north and the south, which allows me to get a lot of blow and insulation over there. Even so, taking the thermal imager inside, I'm able to see the thermal bridging on the studs uh, where you put two studs together. It's called frame caulking. You put an acoustical sealant to prevent any drafts from coming in. And I, I built this myself and took my time. It's as kind of as good as you can get it. Two by six construction with rigid out on the outside. You can still see the cold spots on the top of the wall, you, the thermal bridging on all of the studs. And when I shine it up at the attic, I put so much insulation up there. There's zero heat loss. The attic hatch, you can clearly see, is losing a little bit of heat. And then these are the best windows money could buy at the time. Triple pane windows, they have a resistance heating value of R8.1. And these are quite good compared to uh, also, I went to a two by four construction house with just Energy Star double pane windows, and <laughs> those are some crappy windows. They have an Energy Star sticker on them, and uh, do just double pane windows, those are crap. These are quite good, but what takes the cake is my double double window invention. I wish I had the uh, thermal imager when I was in real estate. I could go in a standard house and tell you exactly how efficient it is. I took it in a standard house with two by four construction, nothing special, it's just an older home and double pane windows on it and holy cow, you can see the thermal bridging incredibly perfect where every stud is, you could use it as a stud finder, those thermal imaging cameras. You can even see every screw and every nail used to put on the drywall or, or wall paneling or whatever in there because those nails are cold and there's no insulation in a little two by four wall extremely inefficient houses and like I, I said I saw the inspector using it to check the attic and he was able to in part of this house it was kind of this weird part but the the wind blows so bad I don't know if you can hear the rustle right now but the wind blows so bad up in the soffits it'll actually blow blow and insulation away and create voids so there was a spot in this newer house without any insulation in the attic because that attic insulation blew away so to prevent that, you'd know that in that particular spot, you would block some of the soffits and block some of the wind from blowing away that insulation. And it's just an incredible tool. Without going up in the attic, crawling around, you, there's no way you can see it. So the thermal imager is incredible. Silly me, on the front of my house, I put a manufactured door with a little side light on the sides. Well, that side light is the most inefficient part of the whole thing. But the steel door that I have, it has a screen door with the air gap. And on the thermal imager, I can clearly see that I'm losing much less heat because of that double-double door system. It's just a screen door and then your standard door. But the side lights are sucking heat out of my house because it's just like this thick, the thickness of a door insulation. That was a silly idea. I'd never buy a, a manufactured door with side lights again because of the inefficiency of them.
So there's one other thing me and Canadian Prepper talk about all the time is force multiplier. This thing is an incredible force multiplier for not much money. This is better night vision than night vision. It picks up your thermal heat signatures. Now I did my tests. Cows out in the pasture, 200 yards away. Perfect. Picks up their heat signature. Awesome. Middle of the night, if I want to go check on my animals, I can see if a calf is born or a baby goat is born. I can see if there's coyotes close by or what the dog's barking at. Foxes, skunks, weasels. This picks up the heat signature from it. So instead of a flashlight that's kind of hard to see, this is easier to see them with. So very, very simply, this takes power from your phone. Either you get the iPhone one or the Android one. They have the two different models, right? So uh, plug it in your phone and this is powered. It comes with a little extension cord. So if you're doing a home inspection and have to get it up in some tight place from your phone, it has a little extension cord uh, to run it as well. So highly customizable options. I haven't even got into all the incredible options, but I literally took it out of the box, plugged it in my phone, it took me to the app store, downloaded the app, and in 20 seconds, I am live with a thermal imager. So um, for me, that's old school. I still use the tech. We, I have a drone, and now I have a thermal imager. Very excited. But I would not be spending thousands and thousands of dollars to have the tool. But now this, for just a few hundred bucks, uh, it's worth it for for me. So. Links are description for Canada and USA marketplaces. Highly recommend it. We'll catch you next time.